welcome back to Contrastly. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're looking at workflow and archiving part two. So this is part two of our workflow and archiving video. Part one was obviously last month, and if you haven't watched that one, I suggest go back and having a quick look over it. Um, in that video, we'll show you how to organise your images within a folder structure that you can so that you can easily find or fairly easily find the images you're looking for. Um, in this video today, we're going to introduce Lightroom into the mix, and I'm going to show you my workflow for importing my images, for keywording them so that I can find images Images on my system and I'm also going to sh give you an overview of how I archive uh, and hopefully safeguard my work from disaster so I'm now within Lightroom and I've got my uh, obviously on my computer system and on my system I have a folder called working images now that is as it's described images that I'm working on or may need to go back to um, in the immediate future so these are all kept on my system um, ready for me to work on um, and I'm going to show you in this video how I get my images into Lightroom um, to this stage. Now you remember last week on the la previous video I showed you how um, I create a folder structure. Well this is the uh, this is the folder structure it, it's gone by year, month, uh, a date, um, a job number and then a, a, a short abbreviation like for instance personal is PERS so I'm not going to go over that again because that was in the last video. Um, on my system, I have a little folder that I've already got set up, ready uh, for any new images, and you can do that quite simply and just keep a, a like a, a templated folder system. The other option, which I use, because I use a date system, uh, I got bored of having to keep adding all this data in to each folder of the dates. So I've got a little app on my system called Post Haste. That's Post H A S T E. Uh, do a search for it. It's a free app. And it's available for Windows and Mac, and it just means you can do a custom um, template for your um, for your work. So all I have to do, I've got it all set up, is oops, is press create project, and it will automatically on my desktop create a new folder uh, with the right structure. So I've got the the month, today's a year and date already for me. I may have to go in and obviously adjust the job number and add that. So that's another quick way of creating a folder structure rather than doing it manually. So normally in Lightroom all you will do now is go to import down here and you'd have your CF card listed as a source with the, obviously your card reader. I've already offloaded the image onto my desktop uh, just to speed things up so I'm just going to navigate to that folder which is this one here and we'll see our images. Now first thing I do is make sure I uh, highlight copy as DNG. Now if you're not familiar with DNG it's a digital negative format uh, which Adobe created. Um, I prefer all my images to be in that format. There's several benefits to it um, and I'm not going to bore you with all that details just go on the web and have a look at uh, DNG uh, format and there'll be a lot of uh, information out there of uh, the good and bad reasons perhaps as well of doing it but I convert all my images to DNG from the Canon native rule format so that's the first thing I do um, second thing I'm going to do now is to navigate to the destination folder and we know that um, we've already created that and it should be in my working images folder so I'm going to navigate there now and I think it's this one test and then I'm going to go in there and within that uh, folder uh, there's my camera raw folder that I uh, showed you how we set up in the last video so navigate so that's where all my images that I'm importing are going to go on my system the next thing um, I do is I always keyword my images now this is a bit of a divide between photographers it all really depends on how you work I'm kind of old school and I've always keyworded my images to find them on systems it's a bit of a throwback from when I used to do a lot of stock photography where the agencies would demand that you keyword your images before you submitted them so I'm kind of stuck in that routine some people use collections and I'll, I'll go into that a little bit in, in, in the next section um, but uh, if you use keywords you can add them here and so I might put a uh, family because these are the pictures of my children family uh, kids um, etc and uh, and so forth um, metadata you can also set up presets 
so um, if you do work say for a, for a client on a regular basis um, you can set up a preset for that I've got a standard one which is my name and again in the caption I'll put uh, kids summer or something like that um, you can also add keywords and lots of other information that I don't wor worry about but you can add keywords down here uh, click done and save that so presets are um, are a good way of uh, quickly adding the, some metadata if you work for a certain client you can use that so um, you can also add um, some developing settings um, I normally just do a bit of sharpening so I've got to sharpen faces as a preset um, and so that's another you know just saves a little bit of time um, and once you've done that I simply will import my pictures within to my uh, computer system and it's going to convert them automatically into DNG like so so let's go and I'll let that run and then when it's finished we'll come back so here are my images they've all been converted to DNG so you can see that by the abbreviation DNG and uh, the next thing to do is really maybe to do a, a cull there's a couple of ways of doing that I use now um, I used to use color labels a lot I still do use color labels but for the first uh, for the first uh, sort of set of culling I might just sort of flip through the images one by one and if I've got one I really like I'll press P which is the pick and if I got one that I really don't want because the eyes are closed or something I'll press the X key which is like a reject button and that's a, a good way of quickly going to the images and then weeding out the ones you want so let's say we delete this one um, and we could just press the backspace if we want to uh, we can remove it or delete it from the disk delete it from the disk will permanently stick it in the trash so I'm not going to want that image so I've just got three here that I want to keep. The next thing I would do is to highlight all those and rename them. Now again, if you watch the first video, you'll know that I rename all my individual files with also the same format, the date uh, date format. So uh, the quick way I do that is to highlight the folder, unless I've got the information to hand. Um, I'll go to rename. Uh, so that I can just copy that, just a shortcut. So I'm just copying that uh, that folder name. Um, highlight all my images. I go to library, and then I can go to rename photos. And again, I've already set this up, um, but I've just pasted in the f the names there, and it's got a uh, four digit uh, sequential number zero 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 one zero 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 two etc etc and this is all very easily set up within Lightroom so starting at number one so now not only do I have my folder named with a date system my individual images are now named with the same system okay but with a obviously a, a sequential number on the end so again if in for instance a file somehow got mislaid or, or got um, a split up from the folder you can go and look at that number and you'll know straight away which folder it's come from okay that, that can be useful now and again so let's just recap we've imported the images we converted them to DNG which is a personal preference um, and we've uh, weeded out anything we don't want and uh, also keyword them as we've gone so now uh, you know in say, let's say in you know nine months time you need to find a picture of uh, of um, a, your children or, so, or something that you keyworded so let's put in I'm just going to put in uh, Gracie on this one um, and eventually what we can do is go to all photographs and you can literally put in the text here um, that any uh, keyword that contains uh, Gracie you can click that and any image with Gracie in it's going to pop up and there's our image there that we had imported a moment ago okay so uh, this has worked quite quickly um, I've got around I think it's um, two oh, it still tells you here uh, it's 2 241,731 images 
if I've read that right, uh, which is about right. Um, so I've got a lot of images in here in this catalogue. So that's very quickly pulled out all the images I have of my daughter there, right from the day she was born. Look, I won't go through those too deeply because they're a bit gory in parts, but um, that shows you all these. So it is really powerful to use keywords, but as I said, some people don't like to use keywords, they prefer to use collections, and I'll show you how to do that next. So collections, um, on the right hand panel here you'll see a, a, a category for collections and collections are, are just that, they're, they're a folder with a collection of images. So some people prefer to use, don't use keywords um, and, and it is quite laborious entering keywords but once you've got a load in a system they will uh, pop up for you and you can just sort of uh, add them in so there is you know it does get quicker and easier um, but you know it is a bit of a pain and some people just don't have a use or don't use keywords so for instance let's say um, you you're a photographer perhaps you're not a professional photographer but you're, you're a really keen amateur and your passion is um, photographing uh, antique cars or, or airplanes you might be set up a lot of folders with uh, with various venues you go to that are listed as different airfields or there might be um, a list of different types of planes and you have a folder for each one. Let's uh, let's add a folder here now for uh, title kids. Okay, you can create a collection or create a smart collection. I'll show you smart collections in a minute. So create collection, uh, call it kids. And all I would do um, is to add um, into, uh, into that folder my images of my children as I go. So from here, I might grab these three and then I could drag and drop them. That's one way of doing it. If I can get down to the folder in a second. Uh, there is other ways of doing it, but I basically drag them into that collection. Now, whenever I photograph my children, I could just literally do that, add those uh, children into the kids' collection. So I know that that uh, contains every picture as long as I put them in there of my children okay or you might or you might split it again you might have a collection uh, within the kids uh, for uh, your son your daughter uh, by name so you just go in there and pick out say all the pictures I've got of Gabriel within that folder so it's a fairly simple way of doing it. Um, I've already got a folder here, funny enough, that I did um, for Gabriel, and that's called, obviously, Gabe. And there's loads of pictures in here that I put in. I think I was putting in a little folder, a little book together for my, for my wife. And so there are all the pictures here of Gabriel through the years. Yeah? So it's a quick, easy way of, um, of um, creating um, folders of your images and some people just as I said use collections don't bother with keywords now smart collections are useful um, you can set these up and you can do quite a bit with them so for instance if you want to find out where all um, um, how many PSD files you've got or TIFF files you can do that you can you can um, enable the uh, smart collection to go through your system and pick out all the images say with a dot tiff um, extension okay so that's one way let's say because we keyword of image let's set up a new collection here a new smart collection I should say um, and we're going to call this uh, Gracie and let's say because we've been keyword on their images and uh, we can um, get Lightroom to um, pick um, all the images that are keyworded so any searchable text within the images and I've already typed this in with the word with keyword Gracie okay and what that's going to do is literally go through all the all the archive all the catalogs and any image that I've keyworded with Gracie is going to come into a new collection and there you go we've got 3703 images that I've keyworded with Gracie's name right back to those early images with Dr. Plant. <laughs> that brings back some memories. So that was quite a long time ago. So let's go back to 2007. So that is a really good way of, again, using keywords and smart collections together. So what do you do once you've done all that? You, you've obviously imported the images, you converted them, you keyworded them perhaps, and they're all safe for your system. At some point, what I do is um, I'm going to be finished with these images so let's go back to my folder 
So I've got my working images here. At some point, I'm going to finish these images. So once I've done that, I want to get these images off my system to free up space, and I want to archive them safely onto an external hard drive, perhaps, or somewhere. Um, or used to be DVDs, but uh, thankfully that's passed, because DVDs I used to have to do burn, I used to burn duplicates, so I'd have burn two at a time, and I might need, you know, maybe one, two, three, four, six DVDs for each collection of images if I've got another four gigs. So it got very, very messy and time consuming. Thankfully, um, things have evolved as they do, and hard drives have got cheaper and, uh, and larger, and so I ditched all the DVDs and backed up onto hard drives. And in this next and last section, I'm just going to very quickly show you my system for safeguarding the images. So this is the part of the video where you come to realise why I'm a photographer and not an illustrator. So I've done this little this little illustration in Photoshop. It's not brilliant, but it's going to serve the purpose. So um, we have here. Let me just bring this up a little bit. This represents the computer. So we know that we've got our images, our working images, on the computer. Once you finish those images, at some point you're going to have to move them because unless you've got a huge hard drive, etc., um, you're going to have to get them off and store them elsewhere. Why my images are on my computer? Okay, I've got a, uh, several ways that I safeguard them. Okay, I've got connected to my computer every evening, every night time, it will back up um, to a drive which has um, a bit of software called SuperDuper on it, and that creates um, a, a complete backup of my whole computer system that's bootable. So if the hard drive goes pop, I can plug in that drive and continue working complete with operating system so it's a complete backup of my whole drive and uh, including the images so everything's backed up every night on there I've also got another drive connected to the computer with which has a thing called time machine on it and if you're on a Mac you may know what I'm on about and that backs up all the files on the system as well in a slightly different way it keeps variations so if I manage to delete a file by accident I can go back in time maybe a week two weeks depending on how big the drive is and recover that file and that's Save my my backside a couple of times. Um, okay. Um, in the meantime, I also this is something fairly new in the last eighteen months since I've got sort of fibre broadband in my area. I'm now backing up uh, continuously to the cloud. I use a system called Crash Plan, and all my work um, is and the computer and all my archive drives, which we'll go into in a minute, are all backed up to the cloud. I've got about four terabytes on the cloud and it's constantly backing up. So when my images are on the computer, it's, uh, it starts to upload them to the cloud as well. There is a period where um, I'm a little bit dodgy, where if anything happens, God forbid, at home, uh, they may not um, may not be backed up uh, quite, quite as quickly as possible. Uh, but again, I've got another little way to try and safeguard that as well. Um, so images are on my system and also um, archived on the cloud as well, eventually. So when you come to move your images and want to archive them, what I do, I have, I go out and I buy two external hard drives at a time. So I may have a uh, a three terabyte or a two terabyte or a one terabyte drive here, and um, or, or always buy them in pairs normally. So they would be identical, two separate identical size drives. I'll back up my images to drive one a. Eh? And then I'll also back up my images to drive 1A copy, okay? So, and eventually, once I fill those drives up, one will be stored maybe at the studio, and the other one will be maybe stored at the home. So I've got two identical copies of images on those each of those drives, but stored at different locations. And obviously the our, our reason for that is, God forbid, anything happens in one of the premises, there's another copy at another location. Okay, so that's how I uh, try and be clever and uh, and keep my work safeguarded. So in, in actual fact, I've got three copies of every image. One on drive copy uh, at home, one on drive uh, one, in the studio, and hopefully uh, everything I've uh, created um, stored in the cloud. 
okay, um, off-site in the States, wherever it's located, I think it's the United States, and hopefully, um, if they do what they're supposed to do, it should all be safeguarded there as well, so I've got three copies. I don't know if that makes sense. When I'm importing my images off the CF card, another thing I do, and this has saved me as well once, um, I, once I take that CF card and the images on the computer, I will put that CF card not back in the camera, but put it in a CF card folder and use another CF card, so I rotate them. That has saved me once. The, touch wood, I don't get many problems, but the problems I have have been human error, i.e. me, uh, d accidentally not following my system and deleting stuff by accident and the CF card actually saved me I think it was nine months later um, I managed to find the CF card that I hadn't wiped uh, it's pure luck uh, to have them on the CF card that long was pure luck uh, so that was a, another belts and braces system that actually saved me once and they were really important images are actually family images on holiday in um, Spain somewhere and so I was absolutely gutted when I realised I'd managed to d uh, delete them. The way that happened, just very quickly, is again, I got lazy. Um, things were a bit lean and I had to go and buy a new drive and I couldn't really at that time afford to buy two drives so I just bought one thinking well I'll buy one now put some stuff on it and then next month I'll buy another drive well guess what I got sloppy I added a load of stuff to that brand new drive um, and didn't get around to buying the second drive very quickly and that drive one morning decided to go pop a brand new drive and I didn't have it backed up and therefore my whole boots and braces system failed and I lost all those images did lose a, use, lose a whole lot of stuff but the most important ones which are those uh, pictures I did, had in Spain luckily were on that CF card still six nine months later and so that saved me again so am I a bit paranoid probably I probably am a bit paranoid but hopefully by having three copies of all my images um, uh, stored at various locations will hopefully safeguard me it's not it's not foolproof it's not guaranteed but um, hopefully I'm not that unlucky <laughs> So there you have it. That's just my way of working, um, and my archiving and workflow. You know, you can take bits of that or copy it exactly. Uh, everybody's got a different way of working. So I hope you've enjoyed this and it's been a bit of an insight. As I said in the first video, it's not the most exciting photography training video you're ever, ever going to watch, but hopefully it will save you from losing work. Until next time, thanks for watching.